In this video, we're going to look at a systematic way to determine what point group a molecule belongs to. So this is the entire flow chart, which will ask the questions, which will lead you to a specific point group out of all the ones that I have listed in the previous two videos. So these are all of them are in here. This looks kind of large and mystical to begin with, but let's just take a look and go through and and see what happens as we go through these groups. Okay, so starting at a given molecular structure, the first question we ask is whether or not the molecule is linear. That seems straightforward enough. Is it in a line or isn't it? So if yes, then it falls into one of the linear groups. <clears throat> and the question which determines whether it is D infinity H or C infinity V is whether or not it has an inversion center. So kind of whether or not it is symmetric about the middle of that axis upon which it is linear. Okay, if not, then we ask, does it have two or more uh, CNs where N is greater than two? So does it have two or more C3s, C4s, or C5s? So usually, that might be hard to kind of hard to see from the outside. Uh, usually these types of cubic groups, you just have to notice whether or not it is that, that type of high symmetry. So that's how they asked this question, whether or not there are two or more CNs of N greater than two. Uh, for example, there's C3s in methane. There are C4s in multiple C4s in SF6. There are multiple C5s in Buckminster fullerene. But uh, those are kind of special cases that I just kind of keep in the back of my mind uh, most of the time. Is it tetrahedral? Is it octahedral? Is it icosahedral? So if yes for one of those, the determining factors here is does it have an inversion center? If it does not, then it is a tetrahedron, which is like methane. Uh, if it does, then we ask whether it has a C5. There's a C5 in buckyball, buckminster fullerene. You notice some of those some of those uh, some of those rings on it are five membered, some are six membered. So around the five membered rings, if you look down the middle of those, there is a C5 axis down those. And if it doesn't, it'll have C4 axes, and then it is octahedral, something like SF6 or any hexa-coordinated kind of metal center. Okay, but those cubic groups, those are usually special cases that you're keeping in mind in the back of your head uh, anyway to figure out. Okay, so we've eliminated. It's not linear. It's not some special super high symmetry cubic group. Next question is, does it have a CN axis? C2, C3, C4, etc. If no, then it's going to fall into one of these low symmetry groups. It's either going to have no symmetry elements at all besides an entity, in which case it's C1. It's going to have just an inversion center, which is CI, or it's going to be a planar molecule, which only has a sigma. That's going to be CS. So if it doesn't have a CN, if it has a sigma, then it's CS. If it doesn't and it has an inversion center, that's CI. If it has nothing, then you fall down to C1. So those are three fairly low symmetry groups there. One symmetry element, two symmetry elements, two symmetry elements. <clears throat> okay, and then if it does have a CN, then we're on the point of the flowchart, which uh, corresponds to most molecules that aren't C1. <clears throat> They're going to fall in somewhere in here. Okay, so we select the highest CN, and we ask, are there N C2s which are perpendicular to that CN? So if that NCN is a C6, for example, are there six C2s which are perpendicular to that CN as there are in benzene? So if the answer to that is yes, then it's going to be a dihedral group. It's going to be one of the D groups. If it does have those C2s, then we ask, does it have a sigma H? Is it a planar molecule, uh, which is per a plane which is perpendicular to that CN? If it does, then it's DNH, where the N is the N of whatever CN you found. <clears throat> C6H for benzene, C2H for uh, ethylene, etc. Okay, <clears throat> if we have N sigma D, uh, sigma Ds uh, being the bisecting uh, mirror planes. So if we if we're not planar there, we don't have our sigma H, but we do have a sigma D. Then we have DND. If not, we have DN. These are some of the hardest point groups to visualize. That's again why I, rec I recommend highly you go on Otterbein and try to practice those types of examples. You can search by point group and just do those uh, to kind of get the idea of what it is because it's hard to see until you've had the practice. Okay, 
So those are all the dihedral groups. Uh, then if you don't have those NC2s, what are you left with? Uh, if you have a sigma H, then yes, then you're a CNH. If you don't and you have N sigma Vs, like water has a C2, it doesn't have two more C2s, it doesn't have a sigma H. It does have two sigma Vs. It has sigma V, sigma V prime. So water falls into C2V because it had a C2 and two sigma Vs. Uh, no, <clears throat> then you try to determine does it have an S, ax, uh, an S which is twice the, the order of its principal rotation axis. So if this is C2, does it have a C4? C3, does it have a C6? Or sorry, C4, does, does it have a C8? Uh, C6, does it have an S12? Those types of things. If it does, then its point group is S2N. Sorry, scribbling on there. If it does not, then it's just CN. Okay, so that's the whole point group uh, flow chart. Uh, <clears throat> you can do this a few times to get some practice, get some get some intuition for how these groups uh, separate themselves. Uh, in practice, when I'm determining the symmetry of the molecule, this generally isn't the type of of methodology that I'm using. Usually, I just have these kind of intuitive rules of thumb inside my head that I've just done this so much that I don't really even know what necessarily those rules are, but it's the process of this flowchart can help you build that process of intuition into more quickly seeing and recognizing what these groups are. So uh, you need to do this enough to get systematic with it, get enough practice to where you build that intuition in your head, just like you could build that, just like you built that intuition in organic chemistry to determine uh, like chiral centers and those sorts of things. Cause this really is a 3D geometric visualization process. And also Otterbein has the same type of thing in the challenge section when you click on there from home, that main that tab there. So if I click on a molecule like BH3, it's going to load the molecule. Then it'll ask me questions and I can go through uh, this whole point, this whole flow chart that I've just said. Is it linear? No, that's correct. Does a molecule contain two or more unique C3 axes? No. Does a molecule contain a proper rotation axis? Yes, I see it has a C3. Then it puts my C3 on there. <clears throat> Identify the highest order CN. Are there N perpendicular C2 axes? So this is C3. Are there three perpendicular C2 axes? So I think so, because there's a C2 here, there's a C2 there, there's a C2 there. They're all perpendicular to C3. So yes. Okay, does the molecule contain a horizontal reflection plane? So is there a mirror plane which is perpendicular to my C3? which is coming out of the board here. Uh, yes, the molecule is in a plane. Okay, so that was the whole flowchart. So I got to DNH where my N for having the highest principal axis of C3 is, is three. So it's D3H is my point group for BH3. So I just recommend going through as many examples as you need, uh, touch all points of this flowchart, find your problem areas and practice those until you really see what's going on there.